Today's testimony by Attorney General Barr using the word spying but offering no evidence of it is sure to provide fresh ammunition for both President Trump and his allies. It's worth recapping what Rhode Island Senator Jack Reed, a Democrat, said to Barr in trying to pin him down. There was the investigation by Director Mueller into the uh, 2016 campaign and other issues. Have you any evidence that there was anything improper in those investigations? Uh, I have no uh, specific evidence that I would cite right now. I do have questions about it. So this uh, panel you're putting together is... I'm not putting together a panel. So you, you just have some interest in this. You don't have any evidence. Uh, I have concerns about various aspects of it. Well, one man who was certainly aware of the counterintelligence investigation is retired Air Force Lieutenant General uh, James Clapper, Director of National Intelligence. At the time, he's the author of Facts and Fears, Hard Truths from a Life in Intelligence. Director Clapper, when you heard what the Attorney General said today that spying did occur on the president's campaign, I'm wondering what your reaction was. Well, I thought it was uh, both stunning and, and, and scary. Uh, I was uh, amazed at that and, and rather disappointed that... Uh, the Attorney General would say such a thing that, you know, the term spying uh, has all kinds of negative connotations and uh, I, I, I have to believe he, he chose that term uh, uh, deliberately. And I think it's incredible that if he has concerns, he could easily have, on his first day on the job after his confirmation, asked his, his own IG, the Inspector General of the Department of Justice, for a briefing on his preliminary findings who, uh, in the course of his investigation, that is the IG's investigation, into whether there was any wrongdoing by, by the FBI. And I think it would have been far more appropriate for him to just defer to that investigation uh, rather than uh, postulating with apparently no evidence. He just has a, a feeling that uh, there was spying against the uh, campaign. One other big point here I, I would want to make uh, to you, Anderson, is we're losing sight here of what started all this, and that was the Russian meddling, the Russian interference in our election process. And the Russians pose a profound threat to this country, uh, and based on the success that they enjoyed as a result of their meddling in the 2016 election, they're going to continue that. And we're not focusing on that. And we're focusing on this, this circus about, uh, you know, whether or not uh, we were, you know, somebody was spying on, on the campaign, which is, I think, a, a gross misstatement. In, I mean, as you said, I mean, he has access to, I mean, he's the attorney general. He has access to all the information at the Department of Justice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he, you know, he didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. He's already been the attorney general. So... He, it's not like he had to walk in the Department of Justice and say, hey, what's this outfit do? He already knew that. So he could easily hit the ground running. So is this just a to the concern, If he had concerns about the conduct of the investigation, the counterintelligence investigation, he could certainly find out about it very early, his first week on the job and not publicly muse about it in a hearing uh, as he did today. I mean, do you think it, it, one option is that he's sending a message to the president or trying to kind of appeal to the president to show he's, you know, the president's guy. Well, yeah, but that's not the, uh, well, you know, this, we're not into abiding by traditional norms. I mean, what you expect for the attorney general is some independence and objectivity, not uh, reciting talking points uh, that he's, you know, he's heard from, from the president and uh, others of uh, his supporters. In, in terms of Russian activity and interest in the Trump campaign, I, I don't know what you can reveal about who knew about that, but CNN reporting is that candidate Trump was alerted to that in August of 2016. Well, I do know, I, I can tell you what I do know. I, I, I cannot speak for what the FBI may or may not have said to, to him or anyone in, in the campaign. I would just point out that philosophically, when you're doing a counterintelligence investigation, if you have, if you have concerns or suspicions, you're not going to alert people to that until you know exactly who is comp might be complicit and who isn't. I don't know if that played in the FBI uh, decision calculus. But I do know that both candidates, as soon as they were uh, after their conventions, began getting briefings from the intelligence community. And one of the topics, obviously, was the Russian interference. So I do know that 
what the Russians were doing, as we, as we understood it, was brief to them. It, the fact that the Attorney General was talking about looking at uh, essentially how the investigation all began. I mean, can you just walk us through procedures and protocols just for, for how surveillance is approved? Because as Barr mentioned, that is one of the things he's, uh, you know, allegedly seeking to find out if any misconduct could have taken place. Well, the, uh, the, oper the oper operational arms of the intelligence community, uh, and I make that distinction because my office is not operational, is not investigatory as, as, as a DNI. So the operational arms of the intelligence community, meaning in this case specifically NSA or, or the FBI or, or perhaps uh, even the CIA, uh, would, uh, if they needed to conduct sur electronic surveillance, which is probably what's in question here, would seek a authorization from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, uh, which I can assure you from watching it over many years is not a rubber stamp. And those, those requests and the investigations that ensue from them are in, deliberately intended to be discreet. In other words, limit them to as few people as possible. It may turn out that there, there's no basis for the suspicion, but it would be irresponsible not to ring out the, uh, those concerns. Now, what I was concerned about and others at the time, again, going back to, you know, we know a lot more now than we did back then, were, were the frequency of meetings that we observe by virtue of watching Russian, valid Russian targets. You know, R Russians who are in this country are by definition uh, intelligence operatives. Mm. So if you're m meeting with them and we're watching Russians and, and by virtue of that, we see Americans, U.S. persons meeting with them, that causes, you know, the, the yellow flag to go up. Right. And so the FBI, in my view, uh, did exactly what it was supposed to do by, ring, by running this down. Mm -hmm.